Hey, all right, so let's check out some exponential decay problems. These are some real world examples, uh, uh, real patterns in nature that exhibit the pattern of exponential decay. Um, and basically, th that what's happening here is um, the higher the value of the function, the more quickly it's decreasing. So, um, here, you know, it's, there's a very steep negative slope. It's, this, the value is decreasing very quickly. Here, where the value of the function is is lower, uh, the slope is kind of evening out a little bit. It's still negative slope, it's still decreasing, but it's not decreasing as quickly. Um, so I, I've got a couple examples here um, that have to do with uh, isotopes. This is um, radioactive decay. Um, so, for example, the half-life of carbon-14, uh, that's an isotope of, of carbon, um, is 5,730 years. True story. All right, so what, all right, what does half-life mean? That's the amount of time uh, required for, so, okay, say like I have this amount of carbon-14, uh, let's say 10 kilograms. Uh, its half-life would be the amount of time it takes for it to decay um, sorry, it's not very good, but to decay down to there's so there's half left. Um, so this would take one half life to go from 10 kilograms to five kilograms. Um, uh, so from five kilograms to two and a half kilograms would would take another half life, and you know, etc. So that's what half life is. Um, so it's the the cycle of time in which it loses. Um, it decreases by 50%. All right. Yes. So, uh, the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. Suppose your bones have 0 0.05 milligrams of carbon-14 in them now. True story. Uh, about how much carbon-14 will be left 30,000 years from now? A little bit of a morbid example, but, you know, this is reality. So, check it out. Um, okay, so let's let's set this up in our equation. So, all right, x of t, uh, and you you could see this written in different ways, uh, like y equals a times one minus r to the t. Uh, I like writing it like this. This makes the most sense to me. Um, so the value of the function at time t uh, is equal to the initial value, the value of the function at time zero, at the beginning, uh, times one plus the negative growth rate raised to the uh, power of t, which is you know, the, the number of um, cycles of growth that have occurred. So let's translate this situation into, into one of those. So, okay. So the, uh, the amount of carbon, let's call it x, at time t. So, okay, so the question is how many cycles of growth are we gonna, uh, going to go through? So we're talking about 30,000 years from now. And its um, growth cycle is 5,730 years. Uh, so in other words, the rate of growth is negative 50% per half-life, per half-life, which is um, 5,730 years. So every 5,730 years, there's going to be another cycle of growth where, growth where it's losing 50% of its value. So how many half uh, lives will occur in 30,000 years? We just divide 30,000 years by 5,730 years. 30,000 divided by 5,730 is, um, so let's, let's just round it to 5.2. So 5.2, so in 30,000 years it will experience, it will go through um, 5.2 half lives. Um, so the value after 5.2 half lives will be the initial value, the initial value, uh, which is 0 0.05 milligrams, um, times one minus the rate of growth, or plus the negative rate of growth, um, plus negative. And so we're talking about half lives here. So the growth rate is 50, uh, negative 50 percent, which if you were to turn that into a decimal, that'd be negative. Um, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
0 0.50 if that helps. So minus 0.5 um, raised to the power of the number of growth cycles, 5.2. So this is uh, so one plus negative point five would just be point five. So we're going to raise point five to the power of five point two, and then multiply it by point oh five. Let's grab the old trusty. So we got point five um, raised to the power of five point two, and then we're going to multiply it by point oh five. So point zero zero one, let's round it to four. Point zero zero one four. Zero zero one four milligrams. So that's uh that's one way scientists can determine the age of things that were formerly living. Uh the half life of carbon fourteen is known. Um so you can see how much uh carbon fourteen is left in an organism and engage how many half-lives have occurred and kind of calculate backwards. So there you go. That's how much, uh, that's how many milligrams of carbon-14 would be left in your bones 30,000 years from now and in my bones. Um, yeah. So let's do it. Let's do another one. So depleted uranium, which is an isotope of uranium, uh, it's a, it's a, a um, type of uranium with an abnormal amount of neutrons, uh, with 238 neutrons. So depleted uranium, which is U-238, has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. Also true story. Very uh, long half-life. Takes a very long time to decay. Which is kind of, you know, the issue with um, storing radioactive materials. Is, you know, they just last so long. Okay, so half, so it has a half life of 4.468 billion years. So every 4.468 billion years, uh, the amount of U-238 is um, reduced by 50 percent. It's cut in half. Um, suppose uh, a 120 millimeter shell containing 4.5 kilograms, true story, of U-238 is not used in warfare, so it's just going to sit there. Um, uh, meaning, you know, it's not shot at something so that it explodes and becomes, uh, you know, vaporized into dust particles. Uh, you know, basically we're, we're simplifying the problem here. So uh, we've got a shell, a very large shell. Um, so that's kind of a bad drawing. It's going to sit there. Um, it's got 4.5 kilograms of this uranium isotope. Um, and that uranium has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. So how much U-238 will be left in the shell if it just sits there for 30 billion years? We're looking forward into the future. Okay. So, um, question number one. How many, so our, our growth cycle or decay cycle will be um, this half-life, 4.468 billion years. So we're going to write the equation in terms of how many half-lives um, will have happened over 30 billion years. So let's divide um, um, 30 billion um, by 4.468 billion. So 6.71 half-lives. 6. Point, was that? 71 half-lives will occur. So the amount of U-238 after 6.71 Half lives have um, elapsed will be the original amount, 4.5 kilograms times 1 um, plus the growth rate, which is negative 50%, uh, raised to the power of the number of growth cycles that have elapsed. So let's do it. So, um, so we'll do 0 0.5. So 1 plus negative 0.5 is 0.5. So 0.5 raised to the power of 6.71 um, times 4.5. So 0 .4, 0 0.043, let's say. Let's round it. 0 0.043 kilograms of 
um, YouTube 38. We'll still be there. That's still a lot. Um, so after 30 billion years. So there you go. There's some exponential decay problems based on the real world. Um, hope you enjoy working with exponential decay and exponential growth. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. All right. Take care.